commercial and collection losses of over 50 of over 50 percent um, across board. It serves as a cause for 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 worry. And also looking at the the proportion of those losses that is attributable to collection alone is also massive. About 40 percent of total ATC and C losses is broadly due to um, collection problems. We just have a, a few outliers like the Eco Disco and the Ikeja, Ikeja Disco, but for most, of these other, for most of the other discos, we have collection as, as, as a major problem. And like we know, there's also a liquidity challenge that, that, the, that we have across the whole power sector value chain, which, which has remained um, a, a key challenge. We have a twin problem on our hands. Petrol on one hand, well, the Buhari's administration has been trying to uh, hold that genie in the bottle <laughs> very tight. You don't yeah. want a genie to get out of the bottle. So, 145 per, yes. per, per, per liter. And I can get that. Anyone can get that, get in there. Uh, uh, diesel has also been a little bit uh, uh, kind in terms of pricing in the last couple of weeks. Looks like we're, we're down a little bit from 200 naira per liter to about 190. Some folks were saying they could sell 170, 175, but the stars still yeah. on one side. But availability of products, yes. Electricity on the other side, the government is unable or looks a little bit unwilling to let tariffs go higher. So, this looks, how is this balancing playing out? Well, so, you know, two very touchy subjects in, in Nigerian space are petrol prices and electricity. So, imagine a situation where they're, they're releasing statements as regards increasing electricity tariffs and most of the customers are complaining that they don't even get the power in the first place so so why should so why should this be so why should this be increased so it's a sort of catch 22 situation where they they need to increase the tariffs to make the sector more attractive for investment to to come in to increase revenue of of these companies but the customers also need to get some sort of assurance that they're actually going to be getting they're actually going to be getting this power and like i mentioned earlier that collection losses has, has remained one, one of the key challenges and is broadly due to the fact that metering across uh, the country still remains rather, rather low. If you, like I mentioned earlier, Eco, Eco Disco, which services like um, the island uh, part of, of Lagos, they have a total collection, the proportion of collection losses to their total ATC and C was about 5%. Five, 5%. Compared to about 30% that you have among other discos, some 40, some even 50. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you look at that number, the reason why it's actually that low is because in, in the space that they, that they cover, you can actually see that most of the customers there actually use prepaid meters. So they've actually been metered. So they actually collect, the, 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 they get the, most of the revenue that should be accrued to them. So one major challenge that we've continued to have is collection losses. And we strongly believe that if, if the discos can go, if, if they can implement a plan that would ensure that customers are appropriately metered, then we would have solved one, one arm of the, of, of the problem that, that we're facing in that sector. You need to grow the GDP. You need to power the new budgets. You need to power the economic recovery growth plan. You need to grow out of recession. And how do you, how do we power this economy out of recession and on the growth trajectory if we can fix the petrol products and electricity pricing availability of that products of course the junior oil minister has put his job on the line and says he will resign 2019 if nigeria uh, does not have uh, uh, what you call what he calls uh, um, uh, a full local production of petrol products uh, well it's it's a bold statement to, to, to be made, and uh, we think it goes to show that they, he's committed to ensuring that he actually gets this sector back, um, back running and uh, putting the refineries back online to ensure that we have enough um, local, um, local products to service um, the needs of, of Nigerians. If you remember the scarcity issues that we had um, uh, last year and, and how it almost crippled a lot of activities in, in, in the country. So we know that everyone will be striving to ensure that we don't have a repeat of, of, the, same, of the same challenge. But, but, but does it trouble you? Uh, there was an Ecobank uh, 
um, online event uh, uh, yesterday, which was all over uh, Twitter, and Nigeria keep being referred to as the gateway in West Africa, in which many countries get, I don't want to use the word, free petrol products, as it were. So kerosene, diesel, petrol are imported with Nigeria's petrol money, and we bring it in here, and some folks take them out through the land borders. Now, do you see this as one major problem? Perhaps yes. we have enough, but we don't, still don't have enough because our borders are very porous. There are black marketers and everyone who's doing racketeering across all the borders of the country. Yes, so what, what we noticed was prior to the deregulation, the partial deregulation that we had last year, we had, because the prices were sort of, the, the prices aren't um, necessarily cost reflective in the sense that um, the current pricing that we're seeing was drawn up with, with a template of about 282 for the exchange rate. We know that exchange rate has moved from that position since, since then. So we should have actually seen all prices to have increased from where they were back in, um, in May uh, 20, 2016. So we know that energy price, the price of fuel should have moved. But for the fact that it has been kept, it has been kept low, which means that there's still some sort of hold on, on prices. So for some of these importers that we've seen, what, what we noticed was so when they import the, the, the fuel into the country, then they divert it to some of these neighboring countries where they can earn higher, higher margins because for them it's still more profitable to sell to some of those, to some of those countries. So that was, that was a major challenge that, that, that we were facing. And if that continues, then we would still have this problem. In 30 seconds, what do you think the sticky point is for us in resolving energy issues as to help bring down the cost of or what's called ease of doing business because it flows into that and food sub index inflation that is still here well you, you know we, we we need to ensure that um we, we can sort of address some of the challenges that are pressuring this these various sectors for the food sub index that, that you talked about is broadly tied to the fact that we are currently in planting in planting season so when we get closer to the harvesting period, we should start to see uh, uh, prices moderate, and this should be generally better for, for, the, for the people in, in, in the country. For you and I? It, essentially. Eroma Sele, thank you very much for coming. Eroma Sele, Aziba, who is one of the investment analysts at Afrinvest. We'll come back to the conversation. Buhari's midterm report will continue in the economy and the markets after the break. Stick around.